Hello everybody and welcome to Forever Rugby on Forever Sports for today's five things learned from the latest round of the preparation series. Just looking at a couple of takeaways from the various games, we saw the Lions beat the Sharks, the Bulls beat the Stormers, the Pumas beat the Cheetahs, and the Greek was absolutely decimated the EP Elephants. So just looking at sort of a couple of the, the small things that we picked up across the game, a couple of play performances, a couple of team performances, and just, you know, what we can learn from the last sort of basically week of rugby. It started on Wednesday, finished on Saturdays. Obviously, there are a lot more things that you can pick up and stuff like that. So, if anything that you feel we've left out, anything you want to mention, jump in the comments. Let me know what you thought of the last few games. Also, please do smash a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. And um, we've got, yeah, got lots of content coming up, so make sure you subscribe so that you're always kept up to date with the latest news. Without any further ado, let's go head over and have a look at what number one is. Right, now this could be a 5-year project, it could be a 10-year project, but the point is the EP Elephants are a very, very long way away from being competitive at this level. And you can, I mean, it's it's inevitable. A union which has been on its knees for so many years and now has sort of had a, a, a the greatest rugby company ever that was going to come in and fix it and pump all this money and stuff like that, and it hasn't worked. As a result, we have got an EP side, which has reverted back to being the EP Elephants. They've dropped the whole EP Kings thing. They've got Pierre de Villiers, a, a former Springbok coach. However, the players they have, there is such a gap in quality in what the players that are playing for EP at the moment and the rest of the teams. I mean, basically, it's a semi-pro side. You know, you've got a couple of players, um, like C.J. Vellerman, um, Chris Harris, you know, Eni Radeva, who've got some decent experience, have got some Super Rugby or Pro 14 experience. But it is largely a side full of, you know, players who just haven't really played at this level. And, you know, and Peter Villiers came out and said, you know, said some of these players cannot step up. He says that, you know, I need to go out and find players. And this is why I think, you know, despite maybe taking a really good step by taking and getting someone like Peter Villiers in, I don't see EP being competitive in the Curry Cup or whatever for a number of years because there's just too much to try and fix. You know, they need to go out and contract players, you know, and and, and the reason I say there's sort of a five-year plan is because basically what they need to start doing is trying to keep more of the talent within the province. You know, and we've seen how the Sharks have basically used the EP I mean, Eastern Cape as as the academy, you know, just pulling out players whenever they want. You know, Makazulma Pimpi, Yao Penke, Kuren Bosch, there are so many players playing for the Sharks that have come out of the EP, um, Eastern Cape. And they need to be in a position where they can keep some of the best players. And that can only happen when you've got financial structures in place, when you've got good rugby structures in place, when you've got a nice progression plan, where you've got varsity cup um, associations with NMU, with and um, Walters Sulu University with Forte, with Rhodes University, you know, you've got to look at how they can build a Eastern Cape pipeline which keep the best players, filter them right into the top and can get the EP, um, East, um, EP elephants to being competitive. And that really is going to be a very long-term project. Um, so unfortunately, I don't think we're going to see much an improvement. You know, it can improve quite quickly if they can try and work out more loan deals, which I think they need to do. You've got to look at some of the young, young younger players, somebody like a Cade Volita. If he's not going to be involved in the Pro 14 campaign, why and and there is a Virgin Cup or whatever going on, you know, or whatever the EP elephants do, you know, that's these are the sort of players, you know, young up and coming players that can try and say, right, well, let them go and play EP elephants for the Curry Cup, for example. If you're going to have Tim Sweel, you know, during the sort of last Super Rugby unlocked and Curry Cup, and you had sort of Tim Sweel um, and and Damien Villains playing at ten and stuff like that, if you've got some like Kate Volta, why not be able to say, right, go and play, you know for the Curry Cup at, at the EP Elephants, play at the sort of the highest level, play against us, you know, play against spring marks and stuff like that. And I think there needs to be a bit more sort of talent sharing, not necessarily permanently, but there are a lot of players who are sort of on the fringes and struggling to get game time at certain unions. And we need to work our loan system better. You know, you look at f- football and there's a much better loan system going on. We do have loans. You know, the Lions loaned Carlos Sardi a few years ago and went on to... Um, to sign him permanently. That was an example of a really good loan. But we need to see more of that. We need to see more sort of players, especially younger players, going and getting a chance and playing lots of rugby at other unions, which will help sort of fill the gap and almost be a bit of a stopgap for the EP Elephants before they can go out and actually sign permanent players for sort of long term. The Pumas finally got the result that they've been looking for for a lot of months when they when they when, um, beat the Pumas 22 points to 15. And that performance just showed how the Pumas can be valuable to South African rugby and how we need to get the Greek was to contribute similar value. We need to make sure that the SA sides are as competitive as possible in and amongst each other as opposed to just having one or two or three really top sides and the other sides cannot begin to compete. We've got to try 
and reduce the gap in quality so that it is more competitive. So when we get to the Curry Cup, it's not just a case of we know the four sides that are going to be in the semifinals. You know, that it is a case of, well, you know, maybe the Pumas can go on a really good run and do something. But let's be honest, every single time we go into the Curry Cup, we know the Pumas won't win. We know the Greek Wars won't win. We, you know, chances are we now, we, with the Cheetahs lose players, we know they're not going to win. That cannot be the case. We need to go into a Curry Cup, which has hopefully eight teams and six, you know, need to be genuine contenders, not just four. You cannot go into a tournament where only four teams even stand, out, uh, stand a chance of winning the tournament. Um, so, you know, Pumas are a very important side in that they've had the capacity to push sides very far. They've definitely been, um, you know, one of the one of the sides, I mean, out of the Greek was and, and, and themselves, the side that have pushed teams. They should have beaten the Stormers. They really played well against the Lions as well. Um, they had some good games against the Bulls. They've been quite a good side, despite not necessarily having the quality. And the important thing, again, much like the EP Elephants, SA Rugby needs to start intervening and ensuring that the likes of the Greekers and the likes of the Pumas have the players, have the have the resources to continue competing. Alternatively, they've got to look at maybe bringing in more teams within the major cities. But either way, we need more sides with top-level rugby. We look at the standard varsity cup is very, very impressive. We need to see those players you know, going and playing for the Pumas and stuff like that, you know, so we can see good standard rugby and we can just create a bigger pipeline. Because the reason that so many players are going overseas is also, even regardless of the money issue, there are four teams in South Africa that you can play for and actually make and, and earn a living. That's the problem. That's the reality. We don't know what's going to happen with the Cheetahs. So I'd say five teams. Right now, there are five teams where there's a genuine career path. But playing for the Cheetahs doesn't get you picked for the box. That needs to change. You know, we've got to make sure in trying to keep more players that we've got more teams um, playing at a high standard, which can put you into Springbok contention. You need, you need to be able to play for the Pumas and still know that I can play for the Springboks because we, we are playing a high enough standard to warrant them saying, well, he's playing well in a good standard of rugby. We can look at him for a caller. You know, we've got to try and work towards that. It's going to take a long time, but that's what we've got to work towards. So, so much is currently being made of the youngster in Stuka um, Mkunu, who after he made a brilliant burst and scored two tries on, on Saturday, but a fantastic try where he ran a fantastic line. And, you know, outran Kornos Kassan, Tian Swanapu, burst through the middle with power, pace, and everything. And suddenly now is the rave. Is this the next beast in Tower of Era? Um, and look, I think he's a very, very talented player. He's, a, some, he's an eighth man who's made the, 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 the switch to prop. And apparently he's loving the contest. Um, he's put in a lot of weight, so he's, he will slow down. But, he, you know, we can see he's a very powerful player in the loose. Um, what sort of fueled the, the, the sort of comparisons were the fact that um, the Beast actually posted on social media that he had actually had a sit-down chat to him. And he said he's got, you know, big things to come from what is a really great um, young individual. Um, the biggest thing, though, is we need to sort of always take it slowly when it comes to these youngsters. We cannot, cannot continue to do what we've done to the likes of, you know, Hus and Yako Tauta. You know, all these young players who we come through and say, right, there it is. That's the next star. He's going to be phenomenal. And then, you know, they get pushed too early. They get pushed too much. They get injuries. Or they don't live up to expectation because they don't have the opportunity to grow and adapt. And suddenly they fall by the wayside. So, you know, I think he's a very good talent. He's got to prove it at scrum time, for example. But also, he's going to be the second choice. You've got Oxen Cher, who is pushing Stephen Kitts off. You know, he will be you already on the bench. If I had to name a Springbok team tomorrow, I'm having Oxen Cher on the bench for Stephen Kitts off because he's playing really, really well. Uh, so definitely one to watch. But I think, you know, we do need to slow down when we get to these sort of comparisons. You know, same like Cade Volita, he comes out and I was saying, well, there we go, that's a future star. He might be, but allow him the time to develop within himself, within his sort of age group rugby. Let him play Varsity Cup, you know, and play and, and star at that level. Play, play A720s and star at that level and let him come through when he's ready and he can make the step up as opposed to rushing them and potentially derailing their careers. Another fantastic game for Cornell Hendricks over the weekend. And, you know, what I was saying over the weekend, I said, you know, I think he's pushing for a call-up. And if Andre, Este, I mean, if um, Damien Lindy were to not play, I think he would be in for the shot. Um, some people got a bit upset that I didn't mention any other players. And my, my point wasn't to disregard them. But what I'm saying is I think, you know, at the moment you've got Francois Stade and um, Damien Lindy who are currently in the squad, um, who were in the box, sort of box World Cup squad as your number 12 options, really. And um, from I mean, France Stade's playing a tremendous rugby. And if Damien Lindy were to get injured, he'd probably slot in there. But, you know, when you look at a Jan Serpentain, Andre Esther Hazen, I do think that Cornel Hendricks is as deserving of a call as either of them. You know, I think him and probably Jan Serpentain will be my current sort of top two picks and then going to more sort of Andre Esther Hazen. Um, I just think that, you know, you, in terms of, it, it depends what you want from your center. The problem is, you know, if you want a hard-hitting running center, that's where the likes of Andre Esther Hazen and Damien Delindy feature really well. But if you want raw pace, running lines, you know, Jan Serpentain, Cornel Hendricks, 
um, sort of fit the mold better. But I just think that you look at Cornell Hendricks and he's really reinventing himself and it's becoming difficult to ignore. When he's putting in man of the match performances, week in, week out, you know, yes, it's not necessarily against the, the best opposition, but we're going to see that hopefully in the Rainbow Cup. And if he keeps performing like he is in the Rainbow Cup against good opposition, he becomes a bit difficult to ignore. And I know he's old. I'm not saying it's a long-term option, but if there are injuries, you know, it's somebody that's been through, uh, played international rugby before, he's had that exposure, he's had that experience, you know, he's reinvented himself, he's playing a whole new brand of rugby, and I think he really could be an option if needs be. I'm not saying we need to call him up now, but I do think that he is a genuine option if, if we need some cover and somebody that's been there, can step up, has played international rugby, has, this, has had that exposure before. Now, this is no insult to Tim Sweel or Kate Volita, but what I think what we see, and this is actually more about Damien Willemsen. Friday night, especially in the first half, we saw why Damien Willemsen needs to be played at, at fullback. The space he found to operate in, to have that license to drift, we saw a whole different Damien Willemsen you know, playing in that. And then what we saw at Flyhoff, where he struggled. He had some good games at Flyhoff, and he has had some um, um, performances in the number 10. But playing at full back, where he's got more license, where he's got a little more freedom to get around the park, suddenly coming at first receiver, or suddenly be able to, do, you know, be able to guide a couple of things, be able to say, can I have the ball here? I've seen some space there. Just sort of taking back and being able to sort of survey everything in front of him and then come on and join in, as opposed to standing at number 10, where he's going to sit there and, you know, pod one, pod two, you know, inside center, now I need to kick for touch, now I need to put an up and under in. You know, I don't think tactically he's the best player around, but I think on the ball, he's still got that, he's got so much talent. He's a really good attacking player, he's got a lot of pace, really good step, he's decent defensively, and he's got a good kicking game. Whether it's good enough for fly half, I'm not so sure, but at fullback, he really is flourishing. And I know that when Warwick Halunk comes back, it's going to be a whole different headache. But I genuinely do think that if the Stormers want to sort of, you know, get the best out of their players, a fly half would be a really good and I think Tim Sweels is not a bad player. But I think you need to find someone of sort of Tim Sweels' age, but a bit better. You know, when they have all the sensational reports about um, I mean, getting Super Wagga back, down, I mean, or getting Super Wagga, you know, that that is a really good um, idea. You know, getting someone 29, 30 years old coming at the end of their career just to be a stopgap for two, three years before Kate Volatil is ready. I, he's just not ready for me. He's too young. Um, and I know that you know they always say, well, if he's good enough, he's old enough. But I still think that there's been too many examples of young players who just never reach their potential because they've been rushed. And I think if Stormers can get a stopgap sort of potential um, flower half for like the Rainbow Cup and let Damien Willemser loose at fullback, he's, I thought he was fantastic. And I think that's where we will see the best of Damien Willemser. But that would mean Stormers going out and getting a fullback. But let me know what you thought. Those are just some of the things that we picked up. Let me know what you picked up down in the comments below. Do smash like on the video. Do subscribe to the channel. My name is Steven. And as always, thank you very much for watching. And I'll chat to you very soon.